What's the difference between 2D illustration and concept art? And what are the skills you need in order to differentiate yourself as a concept artist? Hi, I'm Tanya. Hi, Kingston here. And welcome to Conceptual Ink Academy. Today, we will be discussing observational drawing versus drawing in 3D and how this shift in mindset when practicing drawing will affect your drawing process as a concept artist. Mm -hmm. By following these five tips we are about to share, we shall attempt to unlearn some bad habits a lot of people have when learning art fundamentals. Step one is to create a reference board. And I don't mean one reference to copy from. I used to do that. I used to just scour the internet for that one perfect reference in that one perfect pose. We don't want to do that. We want to be looking for what values we can filter and extract out from a particular series of references. For example, in this photo, we might not be able to see much of the detail in the reference, but we can use it for its great silhouette and pose. Conversely, the pose in this photo kind of sucks, but we can learn a lot about the head and 3D structure. Remember not to just spam save heaps and heaps of photos. Clearly identify what you can use from each reference. And not only will you be able to draw, but we'll be able to understand the 3D structure, whatever subject you choose to study mm -hmm. as a reference for concept design. Mm -hmm. Since we were young, a lot of us were kind of forced to take art classes in kindergarten, primary school or middle school. And I think a lot of us were conditioned to practice through eyeballing and copying directly from a reference. Artists who train in this way will usually be really good at copying, but find it hard to draw anything mm. in different poses or angles. Mm. Step 2. Start by drawing simple forms and shapes to build up your subject from your reference. Really try to analyze which few basic form makes up the subject. Mm. Are they cubes, cylinder, or spheres? After breaking them down into simple shapes, add a center line and basic contour to create mm, a basic no, frame. 3D shape yeah. Of it. Yeah. Yes. Step 3. Next, we will be focusing on each simple shape and refining each form. You can look at references of muscle studies or bone structure of animals to modify the contours and show your understanding of the inner workings of whatever you're trying to draw. Some teach kids to draw with their so-called imagination and they call it creativity. Creativity. They subconsciously create this bad drawing habit that are hard to change when they decided to pick up drawing in their later years. Yeah, I think it's also because before coming to concept art school, you see concept art and it's like like high fantasy, like a castle and dragons, and you think, oh my god, it's so creative. Yeah, it's all but from imagination. Yeah, you don't know that like those artists are actually using lots of historical reference. Yeah. yeah, like you know, there's anatomical references in order to create something like that. Many students we see at concept art school comes in with a lack of recognition of proportion. They don't bother to research and refuse to use reference because they want to use their creativity. <laughs> when they have very limited understanding of their drawing subject. Don't get us wrong, drawing from observation does have its value to train our hand-eye coordination and observation skills, but if you are planning to go into concept art, um, you will need to be pretty good at 3D structure drawing and be able to draw in order to understand your reference rather than to just look at it and copy it. Being able to present things in different angles is also a key skill that you need to know since people down the pipeline such as 3D artists and modelers will need to know that kind of information in order to do the job and get the game made. Even with observational drawing, there are various methods. Many 2D artists use the grid method to draw one-to-one -one from reference. However, if we want to train our left brain to understand proportion and break down the subject, we need to use unit of measurement to study their proportion and structure in 3D space. And also, you can mirror or foreshortening in perspective. Yeah, easily. true, yep. true. Um, we recommend you guys to check out our previous video called Mastering Proportion as we explain the basics of using ratio, units, and space as measurements to draw accurately from observation first. Step 4. It's the time for details. Make sure the proportions are checked carefully and the landmarks are in place. We can now overlay the beauty of detail from our reference on top of those forms and structure. Mm -hmm. We will identify minimum three focal area from the drawing to maintain visual hierarchy and also add more information. The main focal point should have the most amount of detail, which for animals and characters, I think we would say is the head or the face. 
then have two secondary focal points such as maybe the body and the legs and start to apply the detail, line density and sharpness to the main focal area in order to draw attention from your viewers. Then you can start adding details to the secondary focal areas and transition that out into the rest of your image. Not only does this lead the viewer's eye to the most important and interesting part of the subject, but also allow you to create a finishing looking drawing in a limited amount of time instead of starting at the tail and detailing the whole body before you go to the head. Yeah, that's really true. Since concept art is quite a fast paced industry, it's great skill to know how to show and impress your client with the most significant significant parts of your design first without having to spend hours detailing your whole drawing. Step 5 is to lastly use different line weights such as thicker line on overlapping area or thinner line on textures to create a mm -hmm. finished look. I think that really makes it look like... That create a style from the artist. Yeah, true. Layout and composition on the canvas is also extremely important when it comes to showing finishing work to the client, but we will explain this in maybe a future episode. And there you have it. Those are the five essential skills you need to know to start drawing and thinking like a concept artist. As practice, I think we would recommend picking any animal or even an inanimate object you would like to sketch and going through the steps we just went through to try and draw it from a different angle and pose than the one in the reference. Maybe start off with things with bulkier, less complicated forms such as rhinos, elephants and horses, then work your way up to even draw a human. Thanks for joining us today and we hope it was helpful. Look out for more in our next episode in which we will be sharing tips and tricks on making perspective easy and fun for concept art since we both know that it comes off as a pretty dry subject. Um, Kingston has always told every batch at school that teaching perspective literally takes five minutes I and think. everyone should be able to draw pretty well in perspective in their art. So. Don't miss out on that one. Remember to like and subscribe for more art related contents. And if you have any question or additional tips about concept art drawing workflow, leave them in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, happy drawing. Bye. Bye.